All right, so what is Singapore math and why is my kid using it? So I just kind of threw some questions up there that as a parent I would ask and um, maybe you would ask some of them too. So uh, Singapore is this little um, you know, country out there in, in Asia and really the main reason why um, uh, the United States looked at, a, at, at adapting Singapore math is basically because of the statistics. Um, the program was developed in Singapore in 1982. What they did is they were performing very, very low in mathematics for a, a long time, and their Ministry of Education, which happens to be um, kind of like our Department of Education, they spent quite a bit of money shipping people out all over the world and saying, what are people doing different? Which countries are being successful? What, a, what, a, you know, what do we need to do differently? And what they found was depth over breadth. We are going to learn things very well instead of cover, which is anti United States standards. We tend to throw tons of stuff out there because we think everybody needs to know everything and not go as in depth. So that was one of the things they found and their curriculum kind of modeled and, and developed around that um, philosophy. In the year 2000 is when Singapore primary mathematics series was um, adapted for use in the United States. So it's the actual Singapore curriculum, but we changed it to meet our needs a little bit. Um, uh, why is it being implemented in our school? Well, basically what it come down to, um, uh, the United States, a, um, accepted it as a curriculum for mathematics because it uh, was producing outstanding results. And um, that's really what it came down to for our district. We saw the results that it was producing. We saw the results it was producing in early adopters in the United States. And we had teachers go, wow, that's, you know, that's a pretty powerful thing. We can learn this, we can do this, and we can teach this. And it's going to be better for our kids. Um, Singapore has students that have ranked highest in what's called the TIMS. It's the uh, Trans and International Math and Science, and uh, it's a study they do every year, every four years. And so um, here is the TIMS. Every four years, 50 countries participate. They take a common math assessment. They take a common science assessment. So we're going to talk about the math for a second. Fourth and eighth grade students are randomly sampled. So for example, in 2007, 500 uh, schools and 9,829 U.S. fourth graders took um, the TIMS math test. So that just kind of gives you an idea. It's just a random sampling of, of schools and uh, students. So back in 2003, Singapore ranked number one in both their fourth grade TIMS results and their um, fifth grade or their eighth grade TIMS results. So that was pretty powerful. That trend continued in 97 in, in the previous years. Um, the United States, we ranked 12th in both um, fourth grade and eighth grade. 2007, we made some gains and Singapore dropped way down. They're now second in 2007 um, in fourth grade test scores and they were third in 2008 or 2007 in eighth grade test scores. And you can see the United States, you know, we're down here and, and here, but moving the right direction a little bit. Um, it, it's, uh, you can see the Asian countries are heavily there. Now, um, I would argue that it's not just the Singapore math curriculum that is getting these results. It's um, hours of instruction in school, number of days. There's a number of factors that play into it. However, um, the way they're teaching their math curriculum is definitely um, demonstrating some of these results. How does Singapore accomplish student success? Well, the big thing is Singapore math teaches um, why the math works and not just how it works. When, we, when I grew up learning math, um, I was told to divide fractions. What you need to do is take your first fraction take your second fraction, invert and multiply. Anybody remember that rule? You invert and multiply. Does anybody know why we invert and multiply? I didn't, not until I was a junior in college and an instructor finally showed me why we invert and multiply. We don't teach kids that you invert and multiply anymore. We show them why the math works and how you get the answers. And you know what? Kids come back and say, oh, well, we could just do this and it'd be quicker. They figure out the algorithm. They figure out the shortcuts because it's hard for us to remember shortcuts, especially when you have tons of formulas and all these different things. Um, but if they figure it out themselves, they never forget it. So that's kind of the theory behind Singapore is let them discover, let them ask questions and move with it. Um, new math, we hear that all the time. And I'm here to say it's not new math. Math is math is math. It's never changed. Addition's the same, subtraction's the same, division's the same, fractions are the same. Everything is the same. Um, but what Singapore is, is it's not um, new math, it's a different way of teaching the math. So it's instructional strategies. And, and I think that that's an important distinction because um, I do remember when a curriculum came out a decade or two ago and their push was this is the new math. And you know I really had a hard time with it being a math major in college 
math is math. It has never changed. And so it was hard for me to accept that. So I really have been pushing that it's not new math. It's just a, hopefully a better way to teach it. That's our goal. Um, so what is it then? Well, it's a collection of these math teaching strategies that I told you. And they just, they're common in Singaporean classrooms and, and they just work. And we, and we know that. Um, it is a problem solving center curriculum. So we're asking kids, we're, we're posing problems to them and asking them to solve them as opposed to giving them a worksheet with 800 multiplication problems on it to do, to memorize, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move on because there is a place for that, but we'll talk about that. The main thing is though, it's really problem solving focus and really problem solving heavy. We, we pose problems to kids and we let them figure it out on their own and we celebrate when they come up with new ways to figure it out. You watch Singapore Math Classroom in our um, highest ability uh, level kids, they tend to struggle with this even more than our lower ability kids because they know the answer. They know it right now. Why do I have to show you the answer? I don't care to show you the answer. I know what it is. And we all had that in the traditional curriculum. Nope, you have to show your work. Well, now what, we, what I try to encourage our teachers to do and we talk about is, you know what? Let's don't, uh, let's don't focus on the right answer. Let's focus on how many ways you can figure it out. And we're going to reward how many different ways you can do it. And you'll be amazed at the way these kids think things up. And you're just like, wow, that was pretty cool. So really gives them, focuses on them. It emphasizes those skills to be a good thinker. And that's what I was talking about earlier. It's all about turning our kids into problem solvers and thinkers. Um, and it de-emphasizes procedural skills and rote memorization. And I'll come back to this in a little bit because um, I've heard from lots of folks that uh, we don't have to practice math facts anymore. We don't have to memorize things anymore. We don't have to do these activities. Well, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but um, uh, I disagree with that statement, so <laughs> I'll explain that a little bit. Um, what else? Uh, it emphasizes the development of, um, it's a strong number sense, so kids can manipulate numbers. They understand numbers. They know why they work. It's heavy on the mental math, like I had said earlier, and I'll share some examples. And it's a super deep understanding of place value. Um, I remember learning place value that you count over this many and that's a thousand. You count over this many, it's a hundred thousand and you figure it out. This really is more about what does place value mean? How many tens does it take to get to a hundred? And it's not just memorization, but it's actually physically trading things, drawing models, until eventually you learn those shortcuts, those algorithms we call them in formulas. Um, it's a progression from concrete to abstract. So that's what I was just kind of chatting about. Concrete's actually physically moving things around and figuring it out. And for um, uh, a lot of us walking into a Singapore classroom and seeing fifth graders moving around little teddy bears or little dice or chips, we think they're playing. Well, they are playing. And the best part is they're having fun playing and they're learning a lot of math in the process. And so we trick them into learning the math, which is kind of exciting. Um, and then once they get past that manipulative stage, then we really start talking about the, the pictorial stage and that's the creating a model. And model drawing is very heavy in Singapore. And, and I'll share an example with you of that a little bit later. Then we get to that abstract stage, like I'm saying, the algorithms, the formulas, all those kind of things. I'm going to pause for a second. Any questions? All right, cool. Here we go. Next, uh, emphasizes model drawing. Talked about that a lot. Step-by-step -step approach. Um, it's estimated about 80% of all problems in the world could be solved by drawing it out, by doing a, a model drawing problem. So, um, and our kids are very, very good at it. Uh, a key difference in, um, in, in Singapore classrooms too is that it's, uh, it's, concepts are taught to a mastery. In other words, we teach it till you have it. And once you have it, we expect you have it. And when we move on to the next level, we don't teach that anymore. We continue to revisit it to make sure you keep your skills honed in, but we don't teach it anymore. And I'll bring up a point a little bit later why that's an important concept to know. And then um, it just really focuses on understanding. Do you know what the math's about? So here's just kind of a pictorial. Um, this is more for the video than it is for tonight's presentation, but it just talks about these are the three main things. We develop a number sense, middle math, place value, just kind of what I shared there as we progress through. Um, so strategies, not tricks. Number bonds. You've probably heard this if you had an elementary student that participated in Singapore, I mean a primary student, a first, second, or third grader. They do a lot of work with number bonds. We still continue to do work with number bonds. Basically what a number bond is, and I'll show you a little picture one is, we break a number down. So there we're breaking seven into a three and a four. So instead of saying three plus four is seven, it's just a quick visual way for us to see seven is three and four. And we can really solve some pretty complex problems by thinking of number bonds. And, and I'll show a couple examples here in a little bit of, of what, um, what, what we can do with those and, and the power in them. 